Larry Roden uh, from Union Center. First of all, Senator, thanks for coming. It's it's really refreshing to have a chance Yay. to actually express yourself. Uh, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Uh, coming from a rural area, uh, cap and trade, big issue in our part of the world. And from an ag agriculture standpoint, uh, a lot of colleagues uh, uh, of mine, friends, that would normally be pretty conservative have fallen into this uh, mindset that uh, there's a lot of free money coming into agriculture in South Dakota because of the carbon credits that will be purchased. I have some very strong opinions about cap and trade and uh, the damage that will do long term to agriculture and the and South Dakota economy in general. But uh, I would ask that you would express yourself in, as far as an opinion on cap and trade and the carbon credits and the legislation that's before us today. Thank you, thanks, Larry. Um, and uh, Larry serves in your, as your state leader in, uh, in Pierre. Uh, state legislature. Um, I'm very concerned, about, very concerned about cap and trade. Um, I agree that the impacts are going to be disproportionately felt in rural Midwestern areas of the country. The, uh, the estimates that have been done, and uh, Wes, do you have that one from uh, Black Hills Corp? The, the increased cost, Public Utilities Commission now you probably can't see that because of the light. The Public Utilities Commission in South Dakota said that under a cap and trade proposal, it would cost about 50% more for electricity for people here in South Dakota. This is a power bill for Black Hills uh, or Black Hills Power and a typical school district. And what compliance with a cap and trade bill would cost uh, every month an additional electricity cost? And as you can see, it adds up to almost $100,000 a year. And so. The, you are right that some of our um, folks in production agriculture believe that there may be some benefit in the form of offsets, but I think it's going to be way uh, exceeded by the additional cost for diesel, for electricity, for all the things that agriculture uses as inputs to make a living. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very detrimental to the, to the economy of South Dakota. And in fact, uh, it's going to transfer a lot of wealth out of the Midwest to the east and west coast. And just to give you an example, and by the way, this has passed the House of Representatives. It passed the House a couple of months ago. It's now before the Senate. It will be on the Senate agenda this fall when we get back. But um, if, it, if it is enacted in its current form, at least, I think it's going to be very detrimental to, to the economy of South Dakota. And, uh, and, and, you, and that's why the Massachusetts delegation voted 11 to 0 for it in the House. The New York delegation voted 25 to 4 for it in the House. And, and all the West Coast delegation voted for it too. But I think people out here in the heartland are really going to get hard, hit hard by this. Just, just a brief follow-up. What, what do you think the chances are in the Senate as far as being able to stop it in the Senate? Well, we will do uh, everything we can uh, to stop it in the Senate. But they are, they will, they're going to have the health care bill, the cap and trade bill. They're all sort of going to be queued up this fall. And I suppose part of it depends on how the health care debate comes out. But. Um, we uh, we just flat have to we have to stop this thing. It's uh, it would be very and and the whole purpose of doing it, the whole purpose of doing it is to reduce carbon emissions um, and to deal with the issue of climate change. Which, if you think about it, uh, we would be we would be the only country doing that. Exactly. China, India, nobody else has said we can follow our lead. So we would be doing something that I think would have minimal impact in terms of carbon emissions uh, at great cost to the economy. 